Welcome once again to a short stop with a short stop. Today we're going to talk about humility. It's something that each person on this earth needs just a little bit more of, including me. The other day I was watching some clips of uh, some sports things on ESPN and it showed a, a, a little league team um, trying to get to the World Series, two little league teams, uh, Oklahoma and Texas. And this kid from Oklahoma was at the plate at bat and a uh, Texas pitcher lets one go. And it hits this kid from Oklahoma right in the head. And the umpire just says, oh no. And he thought the kid was hurt bad. And the kid's just laying there on the ground. And people are coming up trying to see how he is. And it, he laid there for two or three minutes, but he finally got up, put his helmet on and walked down to first base. But while he was standing on first base, he looked over there and saw the pitcher from Texas he was just sobbing on the mound. And the kid that got hit walks over to the pitcher on the mound and just hugs him. And that was one of the best things of humility that I've seen in a long time in the sports world. But we, we get taught things like that by 12-year-olds. Sometimes it's hard for us to forgive somebody, but this kid from Texas didn't hit the kid on purpose. You could tell by the way that he acted, but he was out there all by himself. None of his teammates were around him, none of his coaches, and you could see him crying. But the kid just walks over and hugs him, and he embraces him for 10, 15 seconds. Then finally, his other teammates and his coach comes out, and they all show him some love. And it's just, it's one of the best things that I ever saw. If, if we look at 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 5, it says, The younger men likewise be subject to your elders, and all of you clothe yourself with, you, with humility toward one another, for God is opposed to the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Wow. Wow. Uh, we need to show humility as much as we possibly can to other people because he doesn't like the proud person. Proverbs chapter 15 and verse 33, it says, The fear of the Lord is the instruction of wisdom, and before honor comes humility. If we're going to be honored, we have to be humble because God shows honor to those that are humble. In Luke chapter 14 and verse 11, it says, Humble yourself and you will be exalted. Wow. You know, that's, that's a powerful saying there from God. If you're going to be exalted before He's going to do it, you've got to be humble. And sometimes that's hard for us to do. But if we want to please God and obey His commandments, we need to be humble and show compassion to other people to the best of our ability. In 1 Thessalonians 5.13, it says, Esteem in love for work's sake. We need to work for other people. And sometimes it takes effort like that little boy did when he walked over from first base to the mound and give somebody a hug. He had to walk over there to do that. And sometimes we're going to have to walk or drive or fly different places to show other people humility. And in Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 10, it says, Work and the labor of love. Wow. Love is a big word. Uh, but when we put it into action, it's going to show our humility. And like a lot of the people here in eastern Kentucky that have went through this flood and are still going through this flood, there's been a lot of people, not only in the United States, but all around the world that has been showing them love. And that's being humble and trying to help them to overcome the flooding that they have endured with some of their houses being destroyed, with electricity being off, with no food, uh, and a lot of other things that have needed to have been done. 
but a lot of people have stepped up and tried to help these people to the best of their ability. We need to prefer one another. Romans chapter 12 and verse 10, it says, honor preferring to one another. And when we do that, we are being humble and showing our love to other people. But what are some of the examples in the Bible that we can show of people humbling themselves? Think about King Ahab. Uh, his wife Jezebel had Nabor, a man, killed because her husband wanted his vineyard. And when Isaiah came to him and told him that God was going to kill him and that the dogs were going to lick up his blood, he humbled himself before God. And God says he was pleased with that, and so he, he wasn't going to allow that to happen to Ahab. Uh, but he was eventually going to allow some of those bad things to happen to his uh, family later on. And you have Hezekiah in Second Chronicles chapter 32, verse 26, says that he humbled himself before the Lord. And he had a, a, a lot of different things that he needed to humble himself for. But sometimes we have a lot of different things that we need to humble ourselves for. And if we look in Philippians chapter 2 and verse 8, this is probably the whole crux to the whole matter of humility. Being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even to the death on the cross. Oh my, wow. He was obedient, he was humble, he knew he was going to die, but he was even humble all the way to the death on the cross. And he's left us an example that is the best example that we could ever see. He died for us. I've been helping a little girl uh, play baseball. Her name is Mary Ellen McKenzie. And she is a little bit challenged, but she has probably showed me more about humility than any time that I've ever done anything in my life. I've learned more from her than she's probably learned from me. But humility is a great thing. We need to strive to have as much humility as we possibly can because then that is the way that we are going to be exalted before God. Let's all be humble. Let's be, have humility. Let's be like that 12-year-old from Oklahoma and give other people a hug when we, he, they think that they have done something wrong to us. Let's forgive. Thank you again for being with a shortstop with a shortstop.